Jury nullification is a process whereby a jury in a criminal case effectively nullifies the law by acquitting a defendant regardless of the weight of evidence against him or her. In short, if you are serving on a jury, you can vote to acquit a defendant if you believe that the person is being prosecuted under an unjust law. If somebody has committed a crime against somebody else, their person, their property, you know, um, their rights, then you're protecting your fellow citizens by making sure that that guilty person goes to prison or pays the price. You're also protecting your fellow citizens when they're on trial and there is no victim and you find them not guilty because they did not commit a crime against another person or their property and you think it's just a political prosecution and it's your duty to set them free. William Penn, I guess, was where it all started. He was out uh, preaching in the streets, got arrested for it. This was back in 1670. And uh, even though it was very clear that he had been doing what was against the law at that time, preaching on the streets, the jury refused to convict him. The reaction of the judge was to send four of the jurors to jail because they hadn't followed his instructions. But a higher court overruled that and said that juries had the right to judge both the facts and the law. And that was really the beginning of the idea of jury nullification in British law, and then it came into American law. Professor Butler, who teaches at George Washington University Law School in Washington, D.C., believes in a concept called jury nullification. The judge would instruct in your legal world, the jury, after talking about the law and the laws that obtain, the judge would also say to that jury, you also have the right, ladies and gentlemen, to vote your conscience. The jury has the responsibility, Phil, to do justice. That's why we have a constitutional right to a trial by jury. If jurors don't think the law is fair, they don't have to apply the law. That's a proud part of our American legal tradition. But this is done covertly, isn't it? It's not done covertly, no. The jury can have the conversation about whether they think justice is being oh, done. That's, in the jury room, you sure, mean? Sure, that's what they're do there but, to do, justice. But, in a criminal case, when a jury goes back and closes the door, they are a power unto themselves. They can do what they feel is right, notwithstanding what the instructions are. It is what 12 minds determine is, should be the appropriate verdict in that particular case. Pretty simple. You're, you're charged with pulling the unsafe people out of society and protecting the safe people. In the early history of the United States, jury nullification was viewed favorably. One example of jury nullification appeared in the pre-Civil War era when juries sometimes refused to convict for violations of the Fugitive Slave Act. These refusals to convict helped the Underground Railroad operate assisting slaves in their search for freedom. During Prohibition, juries often nullified alcohol control laws. These verdicts contributed to the repeal of Prohibition. Although a jury's verdict relates only to the particular case before it, a pattern of such verdicts could have the practical effect of disabling an unpopular enforcement policy. The governments can make anything illegal, and that's the sad thing about other countries. And if you have juries that can reject the laws, and you have the ability to prevent the type of bizarre things that happen. This idea, this concept, really gives hope to a lot of people. It's a real eye-opener to a lot. It was an eye-opener to me, and I think it's going to be an eye-opener to a lot of people in the general public not realizing that juries have rights and that, that they have a responsibility, not, not just to deal with that particular case, but also a, res a very deep responsibility to judge our judges and to judge our lawmakers. And uh, it, it's amazing now to me to realize that we went so many years and this was totally neglected. 
But Larry, I want to start by uh, asking you a specific question. Those who disagree with us that uh, think that this is too much power for the individual, too much responsibility for the jury, they say, oh, this is going to lead to nothing but chaos. They're going to revoke laws and we'll have anarchy. What's your answer to that concern? I can't see any possibility of it, uh, Ron. Uh, for the first century that we were a nation, it was routine for the court to instruct the jury that you were judges both of law and of fact. And uh, we didn't have any anarchy or chaos then. As a matter of fact, we had the government under control of the people, which is the way it's supposed to be. And government was a lot smaller, of course, at that particular time. It seems mm -hmm. like they almost have to have these judges protecting the lawmakers, that they can't expose uh, the jury to too much information in fear that they may uh, rule in a, in a different uh, manner. The jury box is where the power lies, and it's an anchor against tyranny and government. When people look at what happens when the government gets beyond its uh, boundaries, um, beyond its scope of power, well, it passes tyrannical laws, or it passes, when you say tyrannical, it'd be any law that is outside their scope of power. If someone's brought to trial, and what the law says is one thing, but what you feel and you can convey to the jury you know, in, in that room, if it's a bad law, then I think it's up to you, and you know it's a bad law, to express your opinion and state why, and then if the other people agree, then go from there. And then if they disagree, then they need to prove it to you. The way to overturn tyranny in government is in the jury box. It's where people just say, we're not prosecuting people for that law. For example, the health care tyranny bill. Uh, they call it something else, but I call it the health care tyranny bill because it's loaded with laws or rules or regulations that the government has, the federal government has no authority to actually issue. So uh, what happens? Well, just say, that's it, I'm not obeying those tyrannical laws. And if they try to prosecute you, it's the jury or the jury pool, uh, the whole jury or one juror that just says, that's it, um, we're not convicting on this, I'm sorry. And then you can overturn tyranny in government simply. And that's the power the founders made sure that we had through the Sixth and Seventh Amendment to the Constitution. And it goes back to John Adams, who in 1771, told the jury that they could disregard the law. It was, it was very important to those who wrote the Constitution, and particularly to those who were opposed or worried about this new Constitution, that there be checks on government. Now, there were a couple of ways that uh, the framers decided we could do that. One was a written constitution, which had limited powers for the national government. Another was through a system of election and re-election, so that the citizens would always have the ability to decide who will make laws and to change those people if need be. But a very important part of it was the jury system. It was a fundamental way of ensuring two things. One, that the citizens, the average citizen, would participate in helping to frame laws and understand how laws operate in their communities. That's the idea of deciding mm -hmm. law as well as fact. Mm -hmm. In addition, it was a way of keeping an eye on the application of the laws, of ensuring that the citizen was active in the daily uh, implementation of public policy. Those things gradually have escaped us over the years. Well, it starts off with, a, I guess, the voir dire process, and then the judges, you know, basically the judges start asking the jury pool whether or not they will follow his instructions as he gives it to them on the law, and that they're, and he tells them that they're only empowered to judge the facts, and he'll give them the law. If you have, if you disagree with the law, then raise your, you know, hand now if you or such that if you disagree with the law that you won't, you know, follow my instructions. And so he's excluding people that know that what their power is. Most jurisdictions in this country today, if an attorney stands up and starts making arguments, is telling juries that you have the right to go back and decide as to what you can do and what you can't do. You're a power unto yourself. Start to give the classic jury nullification argument. A judge would stop you as soon as he sensed that was happening, tell the jury to disregard it, uh, 
sanction the lawyer and tell the lawyer could be, would be held in contempt of court if he continued arguing along those lines. So it sounds like they're weeding people out if they find out that they know what a jury is there for, what their real powers are. Exactly. So doesn't that put people in the position of pretending like they don't know or maybe even lying? Well, it does, but, you know, the there's a way out of that, and it's called a mental reservation. And you can base it on the fact that you don't think the judge is going to give you anything to do that would be, let's say, uh, unconscionable or against your sense of right and wrong, and that you're assuming that the, right, the law is just. If you had been told at the point you got ready to go into that jury room that if you don't think the law fits in this case, you have the right to make the decision based on the fact that the law doesn't fit, do you think it would have impacted the difference, would have made a difference? Yes. The criminal injustice system will not prosecute people for victimless crimes if they know they're going to start losing them, and they are losing them, because that costs them money. And far too many of the cases are all plea bargain now, because maybe they, what they do is a routine like, if you plea bargain, you'll get two years and, and maybe out in six months. But if you go the, through a trial and you lose, you might get eight years. So people are taking these plea bargains, even though they know they, they're being prosecuted for something that shouldn't even be a crime. Jury nullification is not talking about letting a murderer go. Okay. Jury nullification is talking about nullifying tyrannical law. Tyrannical law is any law that's passed outside of the authority of the agency to pass it that violates individual liberty. Those are tyrannical laws. And that is what jury nullification is all about. It's regaining our, our unalienable rights through um, that have been violated by abuse of government. If we are to have faith in justice, we need only to believe in ourselves. <laughs>